my sweaty pads. And work. So Bradley's done arms and chest. Yeah. Both times completely crippled and destroyed for what? Four La five no, days. No, ch chest last time was uh, three days to feel mobile, fourth day to feel semi normal, fifth day I finally felt nothing. It was brutal to say the least. I try to tell people, I warn them, I warn them, I warn them, like, oh, more, train more, train more. I'm, like, I'm telling you, I we don't out. have to do more. I walked out of here destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> I walked, I, no, no, I walked out of here fine. Yeah. It was days later that I'm like, this is awful. Later, yeah. I'm like, I can't, I can't Because that's a trick. Like, you, you really don't feel like you're doing a lot of work. Hey, you're, not, you're not lifting as much weight. No. You're doing way less volume. The next day, it's okay, but that night, it just starts creeping. Everything just starts getting... That night was like, mm, I was like, okay. Yeah. The next day, the I next woke up like, this was a joke. Like, okay. I texted you, I think, at like yeah. 3.34 in the morning. So Bradley trained me for a while, uh, a couple years ago, and he bought a house and got married, and... Move. All that, all that fun trying stuff. Trying to have a baby. Trying to have a baby. So he's been out of it for a minute, and he just hit me up last week. He's like, "All right, I'm ready." If any of you guys are in like the Beverly Hills area or anything like that, Bradley is a great trainer. Uh, does a lot of functional training type stuff as well. He trains out of what the Sofitel uh, the Hotel. Yeah. So he's got a beautiful location, very, very private, very exclusive. Cool. So, Man, give me a plug. <laughs> We all eat, brother. We all eat. <laughs> we all eat. Now the question is, do you want to go let's crazy? Go let's go ham. Or go, go ham. No, let's okay. go ham. Yeah. Do you see how small these things got? These things are real tiny. Five. April, she blesses us with these cute little inspirational things. May the next six months be a period of magnificent transformation. Things are lining up to be that way, so. Very good. Oh my God. Last one. Good. Wow. <laughs> okay. My toes are growing. Not in a good way. Ready? calories in 33 minutes. I don't know how accurate this is, but I know I can't get it to those numbers on my own. I feel like I've worked hard, but I don't feel like I've worked that hard. I'm gonna feel differently tomorrow. Thank you, brother. Hey, good work, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Let all these dry. So I have a progression of how I do the, uh, the pads. So clients that are with me consistently, um, they have their own sets of pads, have their, their names on them, so we continue to use those. Um, and then, you know, as they get worn out, I kind of shuffle them down to my use. Because um, I can use them on things like arms or legs where you can wrap up um, when they start to lose their stickiness. And then I just replace the new pads. And then I have sets of pads, like demo pads for, for people that come in for just like one off. Everything's antimicrobial, so you're not gonna get any diseases or anything like that. And then the last progression on them is legs with me. Because I sweat so much that after a leg workout, they're just fucking soaked. So I usually get like, one or two leg sessions in with them and they are so wet that I can't do anything, so they get thrown out. All right, it's time to get my next client. It's probably him texting me saying he's gonna be late. Right, one minute, I'm gonna take a piss. 
and get on with it. So here we are with Farah. She is three weeks out from just under, just under three weeks out from Masters National, so she, she looks shreds. Uh, we we're supposed to do a Pilates video today, but this asshole couldn't fit me in, you know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was kind of last minute. We were just trying to think of cool things to do, but she owns a Pilates studio. Uh, you can plug the name where it is. Yeah, Pilates Studio West is located in uh, Brentwood. So uh, it's on San Vicente. So it's uh, pretty amazing stuff. I would highly recommend it to everybody. You can do it to the day you die. It's really complimentary yeah. to anything you can do. It's, just, it's, it's about mobility, core strength, all that stuff, flexibility, everything. So I'm going to start doing it more often, but we are going to get a video with her kicking my ass in the Pilates studio for sure. It just won't be today. So uh, <laughs> anyway, get on with your bad self. Okay. All right, honey, have a good one. So I'm still fasted. Um, you know, I fast most days, 16 hours typically. Sometimes I'll push an 18 to a 20. Um, so all I've had this morning is just water, black coffee. I was debating on doing a 36 hour fast. So my last meal last night was that uh, I finished eating at 7.30. Uh, so I was debating on going until tomorrow morning at 7.30, 8 o'clock. It actually be later, probably like a 40 hour fast or so. I don't know, I figured I'd turn 36 tomorrow. So bring in the new year with a like 36, 40 hour fast. I'll at least bare minimum push it today until like three o'clock. I'm training at 3.30. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll fast all up until I train and then just have some aminos pre-train and my weight uh, weigh in collagen peptide protein post and then have a meal about an hour later so even though I technically broke the the fasting part my first solid meal um, won't be until about five o'clock a little before five um, so that puts me at uh, 22 hours for the day without solid food in me and here's our next victim here this is Mo how you doing Mo how the legs feel you feel good yeah still I'm sore or are they good now I'm not. Okay, so we can train again today? Yeah. <laughs> so, Mo's a uh, 400 meter track guy in Saudi Arabia. He's got some shin issues, so we're doing some rehab with him. And then we trained legs for the first time last week on this. And uh, he had a hard time sitting down in the toilet, yeah. getting up. <laughs> so you got bronze in the 400 meter hurdle, the Junior Olympics. He's trying to get ready to qualify for the, the World Championships. Got some swelling and stuff in his shins. So what we're doing right now is we're just sending signal through there, and we're just trying to flush out some of the swelling and bruising in his shins. Um, and then we'll do. I've already found his hot spots, areas where neurologically things aren't firing properly in his calves and stuff. So I'm gonna put the pads on there, and then we're gonna do some ranges of motion with the band to try to strengthen um, all the little muscles within his, his calf and his tibia and everything. Um, to reduce the, the shin splints and things like that he gets. And then we're gonna do some leg training. So, uh, pretty simple, he's been in his fifth session. Like I said, last week was the first time we actually trained. Um, right now he's been sidelined from track, No, not allowed to do any high impact stuff. He was referred to me by another kid, Abdullah, who's a track athlete, same thing. He had some bone bruising and uh, we get Abdullah cleared medically uh, extremely fast. Um, so he's back to running again about a month and a half, almost two months earlier than they expected. So we're hoping we can do the same thing for Mo and, and get him on the track and get him running in August.
There we go. Two more. Up. Good. One more, bro. Up. Good, buddy. Good work today. Thank you. We're going to the grocery store, grab some things, go home, unpack. Repack, come back here at 27 essentially I have one hour um, to unpack shower repack for the rest of the day uh, my first clients at 1130 I gotta stop and get gas and uh, find parking because parking's a bitch in the afternoon of golds I work from 1 30 till 3 30 I train at 3 30 and then I have one more client at 5 and then uh, I'll have to go get Botox so I was debating on if I should fast all day or eat I'm starving right now but um, I'm just gonna push the fast all day. The health benefits are, are, are great, and just chest workout today, nothing too crazy over the top. Um, and I just wanna show you guys that you can still train, and you can still get a pump, and uh, you can still carry on your life without having to worry about pounding food all the time. As you saw this morning, over 245 pounds. Um, since December 1st, essentially, I haven't really followed the bodybuilding lifestyle. Uh, I've been fasting 16 to 18 a day, Doing keto, I did uh, experiment with carnivore, the super subs and everything. I've, uh, came off for a while, did PCT, we went to the fertility clinic, got all my everything checked. Um, I've been cruising on next to nothing since then and maintaining great body composition um, because my diet is, is pretty spot on. Now, don't get me wrong, I still eat a lot of shit that I enjoy. Like, I'll show you, like these pork clouds. So, these are pork rinds, yeah, but they're like a cinnamon flavor, so they're kind of sweet. Uh, I pound bags of these pork rinds dipped in guacamole, stevia sweetened chocolate bars or keto friendly. You want a bar of those a day. These keto perfect bars, salted caramel are freaking awesome to have those. Then we have these coconut wraps that I'll either put professor nuts or another type of nut butter in it depending if I want the fats or don't want the fats. Have those. Whole eggs. I've got boiled whole eggs. Chicken and beef. I'm not doing vegetables just because vegetables just kind of fuck my stomach up. Vegetable I do have is celery. I smear it with either Professor Nuts or uh, some nut butters, depending on, again, if I want more fats or don't want more fats. So that's essentially what my diet is. Beef for the dogs, oil for the dogs, English muffin for the wife, creamer for the wife. The only thing I got for myself there is water. This is Quinn. I introduced you guys this morning to her. So she's a foster. Uh, Steph took her out of the shelter. She's only like a year old. 
she's already had a litter. Um, that's why she's kind of small. But uh, I had a red Doberman growing up, so she is striking a chord on my heart. Plus, those two, her and Walter, are other Dobermen. They play together a ton. And then every night, she cuddles with Bruce. And she's just a sweetheart. And Helen, who is the psycho bitch who hates every dog, um, because she's protective of her pack, she's just a, a German Shepherd and very protective of us, um, hasn't killed her yet. And actually, someone gets along with her. So it's... We need to get rid of her soon. Um, my parents wanted to take her, but the problem was getting her to New Hampshire. I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, my wife's completely against putting her in a cargo, you know, just uh, drugging her and, and flying her out. She wants to actually get her on the plane with us or something, so I don't know. We're, we're trying to figure everything out. The longer she stays here, the more attached she gets and the more attached we all get. So yeah, that's my current situation. I have five dogs. Helen's out doing what she does, and there's Francis who wants your camera. Francis, wiggles! Yeah, you know better. Uh, Helen's outside patrolling, because that's what Helen does. So that's my life, so that's why I work 13 hours a day and, and never come home, because I'm bombarded with dogs and hair, and uh, that's why I clean every morning at 2 a.m., because with five dogs running around the house, uh, it gets pretty hairy at times. So that's my life now. The dog man, well, married to the dog woman, I should say. Okay, everybody go to your beds. Go to your beds. At least listen to me. That's one good thing. Stuff they don't listen to, they, they run all over her. They respect me and they don't want alpha, so. Get your buddy in here. Go, go. Hi, babies. Let's eat tonight. All right. I got 30 minutes, so I'm gonna shower and get ready for this afternoon session. I'm gonna decide uh, I'm gonna fast completely. So I'm not gonna do my aminos or my nitrox pre-workout or my way post-workout, nothing. Because everybody always asks me, how do you train without any food, blah, blah, blah. You still get pumps and you'll see once I get moving, I'll start looking a little fuller. I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna make it all day and be clear headed and not a miserable prick. <laughs> so I mean, I feel fine right now. I'm just Literally like the the hours like 14 to 16 are the hardest. And then after that, like you're cruising. So like when we were in the car driving home, I was starving. I got home, I was starving. And now I'm like, all right, I can keep rolling. And once you keep it like 24 hours, I gotta get um, you want to sleep, you can just keep rolling, no issues whatsoever. I've done two 48 hour fasts in the past six weeks and honestly could have kept pushing. Um, so, and as you can see, I'm not wasting muscle. And I've talked about it before, like, I'm on true hormone replacement therapy levels and maintaining this kind of size. So uh, you're not going to wither away, you're not going to melt, you know, it's just about being on top of your macronutrients. And uh, yeah, before I go to bed, I eat a gigantic freaking meal. Um, so I have calories to sustain me through the day and doing the keto really helps. So little tricks I do have are when you're fasting, your electrolytes get depleted really easily. So I bought these electrolyte pills and I'll pop a couple of those. And then some exogenous ketones that are no calories so it doesn't break you out of your fast. And then another little trick, Chris Bell and Mark Bell uh, came out with their own Kratom supplement. You can read up on Kratom, you can see Chris Bell's movie, A Leaf of Faith on Netflix, uh, talking about Kratom and what it does, but theirs is Mind Bullet, and it's a really a mental booster. So I'll take like three of these and it kind of perks you up a little bit. And then also the absolute go-to shreddable if I want to sweat and be cracked out and suppress my appetite. Shreddable is great. And then if I go to sleep, we got bulldoze. That's my little concoctions, what I do to get me through that black coffee. So this is Crazy Helen. She's the one that we rescued last year. So she was only with us a couple months when we did the Day in the Life video last year. Helen is absolutely obsessed with me and Steph. She is a working dog. She is beautiful, but she is so smart and so intelligent. So all she does is patrol because she needs work. Steph and I, you know, have talked about, she's only two and a half years old. We have friends that run like training camps, like bomb sniffing dogs and things like that. And she needs purpose. Um, she's living a very unfulfilled life with us, unfortunately. Um, she doesn't play with the other dogs much. She's just out on her own, always patrolling. She needs work. Um, so we're trying to figure out what to do with that, um, whether or not we can get her a job and a purpose, um, whether that means we give her to someone else, um, whether it be police or something like that. Uh, there's a lot we gotta talk about, and, but we love her so much and she loves us so much, so it's, it's a shitty situation. Um, but 
she gets anxiety, so she's on Prozac because she's just anxious. She wants to work. Come on, baby. Come here. I don't know if you guys got a shot of the uh, the landscaping we did. We finished this uh, about a month and a half ago. Redid the whole front yard. Building our studio apartment. We're just waiting for approval from the city to turn into an ADU. So, increased property value. It's a long term investment, especially out here in LA. Been over a year since it's been my last day in the life video. And a bunch of people commented on it. Oh, you look so unhappy, so miserable, blah, blah, blah. You know, all truth be told, it was a it was a really stressful time. Um, we bought the house a few months prior. Uh, you know, for the first time I'm a homeowner, I'm carrying the cost of, of the house and the cars and all that other shit. Um, you know, we had just had Helen, so we had four dogs in the house. Uh, I was just personal training people and kind of felt like my life was sort of at a, at a dead end um, with the personal training thing. I just, I wasn't enjoying it. You know, there's a lot of anxiety and depression and dark times that I was going through. I was just running around killing myself. And uh, it's just amazing how life changes. Um, you know, when, when I tore my bicep in August, uh, I didn't realize then, but that was the, the start of something completely new for me. Um, that's when newbie came back into my life and started using the device and um, over the past few months um, I've mentioned it before but you know I'm working on opening a performance training center um, working on opening a doggy daycare paid someone to, to write on the business plan and get a five-year performa and everything created for both of those to pitch to investors um, I have some investors that are very interested. I just gotta show them the hard data. And so I've already sent them the details for the gym. That's a, a very profitable model, even with extremely modest uh, revenue streams that I figured. So same thing with the doggy daycare. I looked at it real quick last night when he sent everything over and it's extremely profitable, uh, even with very moderate, modest uh, revenues and, and over-exaggerated costs and everything. I have a lot more to look forward to in life. Um, I'm not competing in that, that obviously takes a little stress away. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm living that lifestyle every day anyway. Um, you know, I still do fast cardio every day, I still train every day. Um, my food selections aren't as, or, or a little more lenient than normal, but I'm also doing keto. You'll see some of the clients I train today, like Mo is, uh, you got bronze at the Junior Olympics. You know, he's, he's gonna be an, an Olympic competitor. Um, and I'm, I'm helping him, helping him get back on the track and become a better athlete. Um, the, the guy that referred me to him was this kid, Abdullah. Abdullah uh, ran in the 2016 Olympics for Saudi Arabia. He's a 100 meter guy. Uh, had fractured his tibia and was sat out for a bit. Got back into it and then had some bone bruising in his tibia. He's been out of training for months. And they didn't expect him to get running until the end of uh, end of August, sorry. And two weeks ago, after continuous therapy me with me for about a month, he got cleared via MRI and ultrasound um, to get running again. So he's ecstatic. Um, you know, he's trying to set me up with, with people in Saudi Arabia and everything to get the machine out there. Um, I also work on Abdullah's track coach, who's John Smith. And John is the most accredited track coach in the world, essentially. Um, so, and John was my first in. I, you know, he trains at Golds in the mornings and I saw him and I was like, ah, let me get you on this device. John's upwards of 70 and uh, got some bad knees. You know, he was played in the NFL, he was a track star. So he's beat up and, uh, you know, after like 12 sessions, all of a sudden he's like, I'm running up and down the stairs. Like, I, I haven't done this shit in 10 plus years. So, um, he's been a big advocate of the machine. Um, really one of my first big breaks at, at the gym. And then uh, today I have uh, trained Dexter Jackson on legs. I've been training Dexter every Monday for the past uh, five weeks now. Um, volumizing his quads a little more. Uh, tomorrow I have Sean Roden on back. I've been training Sean uh, for the past three weeks or four weeks now. We alternate one week back, one week arms. Uh, Breon Ansley, who's the classic physique Olympia winner, uh, he wants to get in. He needs to work on uh, some specific areas on his legs 
um, so he wants to get sessions in every week um, you know it's just it's crazy like what my clientele basis has become now at this point and how busy I am like I'm, I'm turning people down left and right um, I just uh, there's not enough of me I'm in the gym literally like, like the fact that I got to come home today is very rare because normally I have uh, a hockey kid he's 15 years old um, his dad hired me to train him all summer uh, playing for the LA Kings junior hockey team he's put on some size so I'm training him usually every day but he's uh, originally from Massachusetts so he's back home uh, for the 4th of July weekend so uh, usually what I would do is I would finish with my 830 and then do my cardio then and then uh, just shower real quick and then have uh, Gavin at 10 and then I work from 11 on till 6 p.m. Um, but it's been fun like I mean I'm working with this young kid and like I've always wanted to be a coach and, and I always see myself as a good mentor so it's just it's a like, it's just so much has changed in, in one year and a lot of it's a lot of positive outlook too like I used to just kind of be negative about things and let things tear me down and um, I always fought forward but like I just I don't know, I'd, I'd wake up in like a negative mood and just let it consume me and now it's like every day I'm like I wake up I'm like I'm positive you know the, the first negative day I've had in a long time same thing everything fucking snowballed uh, last week I'd, I just worked like three 12 hour days in a row and uh, me and Steph were supposed to do something and she ended up having to go do something else we never end up seeing each other because we don't we never see each other really that much so I just got kind of flustered I was like fuck I'm like I'm killing myself and there's like no golden nugget I don't get to spend time with my wife none of this shit um, so I kind of like went to bed pissed off and I woke up and I was in a bad mood and went to the gym and went to go do get a haircut sure enough I sat around for 45 minutes waiting for my the guy that cuts my hair to finish up and he was only halfway through this guy's haircut so I left in a pissed off mood and then I ended up rear ended someone in a stupid little fender bender accident and after that happened I was like get it out of your head you've been negative all day just push that bullshit aside so sure enough like within an hour after the little fender bender I just got back in a positive mindset and the rest of my day was positive so it's about outlook upon things um, you know and, and like I said with this device I'm, I'm doing something that I love and something that no one else is doing and I've got uh, such a corner on the market out here. It's it's awesome. Um, so I'm really excited on getting these two projects up and going. Um, you know, hopefully I can both get them both going. So you know the the gym project is obviously that's my baby. Um, and it's not your typical gym. It's like a it's gonna be a high performance center. It's gonna have a hormone and wellness clinic. It's gonna have all these biohacking stuff. So it's gonna have everything you need to feel and perform your best in one spot so you don't have to walk around don't have to go any place you're gonna have your massage therapist there you're gonna have everything all in one place and we're gearing towards professional athletes celebrities like high-end clientele like it's probably gonna cost you a bare minimum of a thousand bucks a month to walk into the gym um, so very exclusive uh, so that's what's gonna be different about it than every other bodybuilder or meathead or whatever who just opened the gym and, and, and hopes things are gonna happen and then the dog daycare obviously with Steph being so uh, adamant and, and starting the non-profit rescue and everything um, if I can get a dog daycare open then I can actually move my parents out here get them to work the dog daycare between those two and Steph they'd be like the managers running the whole place and we could run the nonprofit rescue out of the dog daycare so that cuts down our overhead on running the nonprofit and allows us to do a little more uh, more charity events things like that uh, fundraising stuff um, and they're they're extremely profitable especially out here in LA people just piss money away um, for their dogs and with the millennial generation coming up uh, Millennials are way more inclined to get a dog than they are to have a kid um, so it's just a it's a money-making business so um, yeah, so that's kind of what I got going on right now. Um, so, you know, life's good. I got, I got a lot of a lot of great stuff to to be happy about, <clears throat> and I'm killing myself. You know, people at the gym, they're like, Jesus Christ, they're like you are literally living here. You are so busy. Like, and they're, and they're excited. They're happy. Um, you know, because when I first walked into the gym with that device, everybody thought I was a lunatic. You know, not many people thought it was legit, and now everybody's seeing 
Olympians and this and that. Like, like yesterday I trained some, not on the newbie, but uh, just because of the connections I made. I trained some girl from, uh, she's an influencer from Russia. She has 5.1 million followers on, on Instagram, 6.4 million subscribers on YouTube. You know, and that's, those are the type of people that I'm, that I'm starting to pigeonhole myself with. Again, last year it was struggling, training the same old people, trying to chase a hundred bucks a session. And now I'm pulling a grand a day and, you know, I'm not wanting to brag about money, but like, fuck, when I was 22, 23, if you told me how to make a grand a week, I'd be excited. And, and I'm pulling a grand a day. I mean, uh, I hit. I had a, a dream of being able to make 30 grand a month by the time end of 2020 came around. And uh, not that I can sustain it, but I hit 30 grand this past month. And it's like, I've killed myself. But uh, it's just proof that I'm heading in the right direction with this with this device and, and everything that I'm trying to do. So, uh, so that's why I'm between that and just taking on a lot more positive attitude about things and, and a lot of that changed when I did hurt my bicep I told myself in that day like the second I got hurt I was like just be positive uh, something good's gonna come out of this you know what's the sense of being pissed off and, and you know sticking your head in the sand and pretending like the world's out against you I just from that moment even Steph was like could not believe that I not once was I like oh, poor me I was like well fuck it shit happens we move on we get better how much can you bench left Oh man, it's been years since I've done that. Um, hello. <laughs> no, I don't. I, it's all for show. It's, wow. I'm a bodybuilder. It's a, it's all for show. It's all we do. Wow. Oh. Um, you know, stock options, percent ownership at some point. You know, that kind of stuff. Just kind of, you know. Just kind of think about how we can do that. I'm putting that together right now okay. uh, for him so we can get approval. I don't think we're ever going to teach rehab training courses, no, but no. the fitness stuff, I already, I already put the whole fitness thing together with mine to begin with, but he wants to see what it looks like. So that conversation was about the VP of NewFit, who I always dealt with, um, is leaving the company and he's starting his own distribution company. Um, so he's just selling newbies, but on his own. He's got a financial backer. Uh, he's got... Um, uh, a woman that's ahead of this company that has major connections everywhere like we're talking like Oprah Winfrey you name it we can get our, our hands on it essentially they want they want me to be a part of their sales force and not only just their sales force but the team in general training people uh, on how to use the, the, the machine properly and everything because again Rich is the one that came up with all the training essentially um, the fitness side of new fit and Garrett the owner their focus more on a therapeutic side of things. So um, when Rich decided to do his own thing, he approached me, asked me if I'd be interested, and, and at first I thought it was gonna put me in kind of a precarious situation, um, but Garrett was cool with it, Rich is cool with it, I'm gonna do some stuff for Garrett, um, but primarily my focus is gonna be with the new distribution company, um, helping them with sales and helping them train people and, and, and things like that, and using my influence to, to reach out to people and get people on the machine that may never will or never have. Um, so we're just working on terms of contract and things like that, we'll figuring out stock options and equity or uh, rev sharing or, or something like that. So that's that's another thing that I have going on outside of my place and uh, the, the dog center. So uh, got a lot going on. It's Like I said, it's been a crazy couple months just think of something and all of a sudden, uh, you know, just start putting it out there. Same thing with Rich, he just started putting it out there and all of a sudden all the pieces started falling together. So that's, it's going to be an interesting journey. See what happens.